This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the uh, uniquely named Samsung Notebook 9 Pen. This is a 13.3 inch convertible Ultrabook with pen. It's Wacom EMR technology, which goes under the name of the Samsung S Pen, just like they do with the Note series of products. So, how is this different from the already well reviewed and pretty good actually Samsung Notebook 9 Pro 13 and 15 inches well obviously 13 inch in the case of this one this one is newer and this one is even lighter and for those of you who follow Samsung Samsung's laptops the regular Notebook 9 series is the super ultra light laptops that compete against the LG Gram so they've done the the lightification if you will and made this uncannily light this is only 2.2 pounds which is 997 grams not quite a kilogram so for something that you do use perhaps with the pen as a tablet that sort of thing you know the lightweight is always a helpful kind of thing when you're using it like that we're gonna look at it now so just so you can see this is the Dell XPS 13 9370 so this is the smallest and the lightest yet of the XPS 13s and you can see the footprint is really similar which means that our Samsung here like the XPS 13 has the footprint more like of a 12 inch laptop even though it's a 13.3 inch laptop if that wasn't enough here the weight is just <laughs> it's, it's it's insane you know and it's the same thing that they've been doing with the notebook 9 series and LG has been doing with the Gram series make a metal body laptop as absolutely light as you possibly can for those road warriors who really just don't want a lot of weight in the bag but wait this is the charger this itsy bitty little thing right here so even the charger is not going to weigh you down so that's pretty impressive stuff now in terms of the looks this, this is aluminum it's silver I, you could say it's modern and it's clean I know there's a few reviewers out there you've seen them who just kind of went to town on complaining that it wasn't fancy and expensive looking enough and at a price of around $12.99 street for this thing $13.99 list on Samsung's website but you can do better um, you know you could say that it doesn't have the panache of the HP Spectre X360 for example which is a stunning looking piece of hardware but then again this one is a lot lighter and has a smaller footprint so that's the idea once you start lightening up on the materials the design often gets a little more simple and plain so I'm not going to complain right different strokes are different folks you want the beautiful designer look you can get your HP Spectre X360 also a convertible pen you want the lightest possible load and Wacom EMR pen technology which typically is the best of the pen technologies well then you have the Samsung that said, there's just it's pretty solid. This is you know, if you push down on the panels, there's going to be a teeny bit of flex on the lid. That's true of any laptop. This is pretty rigid stuff, so it doesn't feel very delicate, despite the fact that it's light. Not that I would throw this around indiscriminately. I would not throw any laptop around indiscriminately anyway, though. There's not a lot of room for ports on something this small, in part because they brought the footprint down in size so there's less room for motherboard which ports connect to on this it's, it isn't so much about the thickness on this it's it's thin but it's not ultra thin but you're gonna have a micro SD card slot instead of a full-size SD card slot on this you do get full-size HDMI of course you have your headphone jack and you only have one USB A 3.0 port on it that's a little skimpy on the other side though happy day we have a USB-C port Gen 1 not Thunderbolt 3 it can support charging though the included charger, charger is a barrel pin charger that plugs into the well connector for that I'm okay with that because that frees up your USB-C port so you can actually use it for other things besides charging so that that's fine with me and it does support USB-C battery packs and chargers and all that kind of thing so a little bit of a challenge the other thing is it's thermally challenged we have Intel 8th generation KB Lake RCPU is the same thing you can get in the notebook 9 pro family released at the end of 2017 this one being an early 2018 model uh, really it's the design that's different but you can see from the ventilation going on here the only ventilation is this back area right here that's not very much and now we're talking quad core CPUs granted the 15 watt ultrabook quad core CPUs not not the high-end workstation ones that are 45 watt and even higher but still that's a little challenging and uh, the fan is on quite a lot now it's not a very loud fan because it's not a very large fan but you'll hear it particularly if you're using well pen centric things like say Photoshop art programs like that not so much for note taking no not there or not for video streaming but it's enough to 
you make the bottom get toasty too. It does rise above human body temperature here. If you're doing things like Photoshop and applying some filters, having many layers in a drawing, that sort of thing, it gets to be about 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 105 degrees, where 98.6 is normal human body temperature for those of you who typically think in Celsius instead. So it gets kind of toasty, not going to fry the hairs off your leg kind of thing, but yeah, so that's another drawback of these thin and light designs, and they're not quite up to what Dell has done yet with the XPS 13, and what Lenovo's been doing with the ThinkPads, really pushing the thermal envelope successfully while keeping it cool. Now this is a Core i7-8550U CPU so far, that's the only one on the market, there's no Core i5. It has 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM, dual channel RAM, that RAM is soldered on board since so you can't upgrade it. Will they offer a 16 gig model? I don't know, my guess is probably not. Yeah, it finally moves up to a, a Samsung's own brand, PCIe NVMe SSD. Before they were using SATA 3 SSD, so you've got the fastest of the SSD technology in here. In terms of performance, with with that. KB Lake R eighth gen CPU, it performs pretty much average, middle of the pack among competing ultrabooks, including the Spectre X360, the HP Spectre non-X360 model, uh, Dell Inspirons, that sort of thing. It's not as fast as the two, again, the Dell XPS 9370, the XPS 13 that we talked about, and some of the ThinkPads that are actually pushing the wattages higher and getting a little bit higher performance. You know, we're not talking huge differences even when they do that there, but the scores are solid for this middle of the road. It has dual-in biometrics. You have both a fingerprint scanner embedded in the keyboard area and a Windows Hello IR camera. Intel 8265AC Wi-Fi is standard. That's what you find on most Ultrabooks in this price range as well. The trackpad, it's superb. I love it. Samsung generally does a really good job. If you, if you call Macs the, the paragon of awesome trackpadness, this is Mac-like. It's just dependable, reliable, does its job. You never even think about it, which is the way a trackpad should be. The keyboard is pretty low travel. It's not what I would call comfy. It's competent, but not comfy. Uh, it's, again, with these ultralight products, this is the price that we pay. I have to say, I do like the keyboard better on the Notebook 9 Pro 13 inch versus this one. It feels a little more comfortable and a little less abruptly low travel. The backlighting on it, well, the clever thing or the smart thing is, you know, you've seen these light silver laptops, hello HP Spectres, that have white backlighting on the keys, right? So in certain lighting, you just can't see the backlighting against the light silver. So Samsung went with this kind of slightly sci-fi green, I don't know, it's it's a little bit of a weird color, but it is effective in making the key maskings visible in all lightings, so there you have that. The display is, you know, generally Samsung does a very nice job, they always go with full HD displays, they're not pushing the high resolutions, the 4K, but the displays look really nice. Now this one, in terms of metrics, having measured it with our colorimeter, doesn't have particularly impressive specs, it's about par for the course in this $1,000-ish to $1,500 kind of price range, but it looks really good. And part of that is because it's fairly well calibrated out of the box. You're just looking, ooh, contrast looks better than it actually is. Go imagine that. And the colors are well represented. Being Samsung, sort of like they do with their phones, they have a bunch of different color profiles. You have what's called photo editing, which is the one that I choose. It's kind of closest to actually having the correct white balance and color representation. They have an automatic mode that dynamic, dynamically tries to adjust to the content you're looking at it. You get the idea, all those things. So those are available. I usually keep it on the photo editing mode to be as accurate as possible from there. So you can see the metrics on screen there. And again, it looks better than you would guess. Samsung claims 350 nits of brightness. We measured 331, so it's a little short, but they still have that outdoor brightness mode they've been using for a while, which puts pushes it up about 50 to 75 nits. You don't want to do it all the time because your battery life will be shorter, but it's handy if you need it. It is a glossy display. It's pen, it's touch, it's still using Wacom EMR, which Samsung brands as the S Pen. Just like with the Notebook 9 Pro, so there's no Wacom feel drivers, there's no control panel, so I know some of you want extra buttons on your pens and you're wondering if you can use a tablet PC pen, like here's one from an old Toshiba tablet PC. And sure, you can use the multi ones, but the, the challenge is sometimes finding a way to actually assign those buttons to do anything because there's no main control panel to do that sort of thing. There you go. Lastly, there's battery life. And well, the good news again is the compact charger, the fact that it also supports USB-C charging. The not so good news is 39 watt hour battery. While LG with the Gram managed to find a way to put really large batteries, relatively speaking, in very light laptops, Samsung, I think because they went with such a small footprint, 
to match the XPS 13 and that sort of thing. Didn't have room for the batteries. Only 39 watt hour, which is kind of on the low side, honestly. And as a result, battery life is about six hours, which is nothing to write home about among today's laptops, where often we see more, especially with just a full HD display. It's not super high resolution. And I think part of that also is the fact that fans are on more than they would be on some other laptops because, well, it's pushing the thermal envelope a little bit, that design, like I said. So, yeah, the, the regular 13-inch Notebook 9 Pro actually has a larger battery. Of course, that one's 2.9 pounds, and this one is 2.2 pounds. So you can see where the half pound or more of difference can actually get you some better performance versus the lightweight. So it's what you want to trade off in the end there. To open up the bottom, first you have to peel off the rubber feet. Now, happily, these are not held with adhesive, so they're actually reusable without having to worry about saving the goo. They are kind of a pain to pry off. Use a fingernail or a very small flathead screwdriver, carefully pry them off. And then there's four Phillips head screws. Then you work off all the little clips that are on the underside here, and they're a little tenacious. Suction cup helps, something like this. And voila, there's your interior with not a lot of stuff you can upgrade. Here is your battery should you need to replace it down the road. Here's the surprisingly adequate stereo speakers. Uh, you set the volume to about 75%. They can fill a bedroom size room pretty well without distorting, which isn't too, so bad. And here's our M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD in this socket right here. Ah, oh, there's a little bit of play here bouncing around. RAM is soldered on board. You can't upgrade it. Here is our heatsink tripod design. I always prefer to see one screw in each corner. Oh, well, it looks like it's screwed on from the other side. So it would be a little bit of a pain in the neck if you wanted to take this off to repaste it. But people don't usually bother doing that with Ultrabooks. Our fan right over here. And this is the Wi-Fi card. It is not socketed and upgradable. It's actually soldered onto the daughter card, which is not unusual for super thin, light, small laptops. Here's the pen silo, by the way. Do take the pen out before you take off the bottom cover. And this is a spring-loaded little pen. You can hear it clicking, nice positive feel. It only goes in one way. Do not try to force it in the other way. <laughs> so there's your pen. So that's the Samsung Notebook 9 pen. Again, if you want a pen and you want it as light as possible in a conventional 13.3 inch convertible ultrabook, which means it has a normal laptop ergonomic kind of design with the 360 degree hinges, well, you're not going to get much lighter than this. I mean, this compares to the Dell XPS 13 in terms of footprint, which makes it one of the smaller laptops in the 13.3 inch category, and it's significantly lighter. Uh, the only thing I wish is that the cooling were a little bit better, but you know, they're pretty thermally constrained with this kind of design and making it this light. And then there's a pen feature. And you know, that's why you might want to buy this over the HP Spectre X360, the Lenovo Yoga 920, or even the Microsoft Surface Pro, because the, the pen, the Wacom EMR pen experience on this is just so nice. If you, even if you're a note taker or not, artists are going to notice just how silky and responsive the pen is. And the fact that the palm rejection is a little bit better, less often, is it going to screw up when you're resting your hand on the glass while writing or drawing? Certainly if you're an artist, yeah, this is just nicer to use, better pressure curves, tilt support, reliably, all that sort of thing. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.